What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Podcast Show where we talk to you about news, games, and sandwich. A little fun in between, or apparently right at the beginning of the podcast when Michael Clare caresses your ear during the intro. That I'm was, joined by Michael Clare. I'm Timothy DeRoe. What's up, Mike? That was just for you. That was not <laughs> meant to be spoken of on the podcast. Hey, they I gotta thought know. we had a they gotta know. agreement. See, see look. I, I we're in I frame. I trust you. Where's the, oh, I'm not looking at the camera. We're in frame. And, and and the thing covers the frame, so they couldn't see you caressing my earlobe. Exactly, they weren't and supposed it, to. I felt violated, and now I feel exploited. I just need it to be known. Like you I, didn't say you didn't like it. Instead of filing a police report, you I didn't figured say I you didn't say like it to the it. public. I'm not saying I didn't like it. <laughs> today, today we're going to talk about Microsoft spending a fuck ton of money on Lots of the money. time, um, rebranding, doing Game Pass stuff, PlayStation doing the opposite, and Pikmin doing some weird shit with Niantic. But before we get into that. Let's talk about uh, our little bit of housekeeping. Join our community Discord. You should do that. Because we've got a community Discord in the show notes or the YouTube description. You can find a link in there, a permanent mm -hmm. link, which whenever we finally launch a Patreon will go away. But for right now, you can join it. So you should do it right now. Um, and you can play League with the guys. Apex, we talked about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Invincible mm -hmm, came mm -hmm. out. We've been discussing that. Um, a lot of stuff going on in there. So you should join our community Discord. It's great. Also, look up Synced Up Highlights on TikTok. Our boy... Uh, Spencer still editing and chopping mm -hmm. up the highlights for us and posting over on TikTok. And There's some funny ones. They're doing numbers, as they say. Well, they're doing numbers compared to our we, regular numbers. We, Not I TikTok we, numbers. We had our first comment that was... Not us? Yeah. Uh, hell this yeah. Was like first FYP. Yeah. I was like, oh. Right. We'll take those. We'll take those. Um, also, if you're listening on the audio version of the podcast and you're like, you know what, dude? I want to see those beautiful faces. No, you don't. Or you're like, I want to support these people more. Jump on over to YouTube.com slash Sync Up Podcast and you can... Give us a subscribe, a like, a comment, all the stuff that you can do over there, and we would appreciate it. But if you don't want to see our stupid faces, understandable, because they're not actually that beautiful, you can close out of YouTube, boom, mm -hmm. hit the X button. Don't unsub, but close it. Hit just, the X button. Just Go close. to your favorite audio service, Spotify. search Synced Up Podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcast, 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 Podbean. Podcast, Podbean, all the stuff. Search Synced Up Podcast, look for the blue and white logo, and we're over there. Mm -hmm. New episodes go up in both of those feeds, Mondays at 7 a.m. Central, Central Time Zone, Zone Gang. gang. Mm -hmm. Also, you can write into the show at SyncedUpPodcast at gmail.com with any questions, comments, or concerns that you would like read on the show or not read on the show. That is fine as well. Yes. Also, follow us on Twitter at Synced Up Pod to keep up to date with all of our content. I know we got a Monster Hunter Rise Impressions video coming out very soon. Your boy Ooh. Isaiah Roberson is going to be You're on that one. Spoil that, huh? Yeah, I'm just going to spoil that. And that's going to be, well, you got to talk about it. In the housekeeping, it's coming out. Probably come out but on you Tuesday. You can make it mysterious. Probably gonna come out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Who knows? I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, so get excited for that and any other stuff that we have going on. Now let's talk about Microsoft buying Discord. Microsoft mm -hmm. is in talks to buy Discord for more than ten billion fucking dollars. This that's, is by Dina Bass and Katie couple. Roof at Bloomberg. Not Bloomberg. 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 Microsoft Corporation is in talks to acquire Discord Incorporated, a video game chat community for more than $10 billion, according to people familiar with the matter. Discord has been talking to potential buyers and software giant Microsoft is in the running, but no deal is imminent, said the people, who asked not to be identified because the discussions are private. Discord is more likely to go public than sell itself, one person said. Uh, representatives from Microsoft and Discord declined to comment. VentureBeat reported earlier on Monday that Discord was engaged in general sales talks. San Francisco-based Discord is, based, uh, is best known for its free service that lets gamers communicate by video, voice, and text. And people stuck at home during the pandemic have increasingly used its technology for study groups, dance classes, book clubs, and other virtual gatherings. It has more than 100 million monthly active users and has been elaborating its communication tools to turn it into a, quote, place to talk rather than merely a gamer-centric platform. And a lot of podcasts nowadays have been using Discord to do their podcasts. I know Kind of Funny does. Yep. Microsoft, which last year sought to buy a social media app, TikTok, and held talks to acquire Pinterest, has been shopping for assets that would provide access to thriving communities of users, according to people familiar with the company's thinking. Microsoft's Xbox business has also been spend, expanding the suite of subscription perks it provides as part of its Game Pass offering. Microsoft shares were up about 1.2% in the first minutes of trading on Tuesday. Quote, Microsoft possibly acquiring Discord makes a lot of sense as it continues to reshape its gaming business more towards software and services, said Bloomberg Intelligence an analyst Matthew Canterman. There's a big opportunity to bundle Discord premium offering Nitro into the Game Pass service to drive more subscriptions from the last reported 18 million subscribers. So this would be a big fucking deal. In my oh, it would be huge. Now, do you see Discord staying um, Discord and them doing their own thing? Or do you think Microsoft is going to pull them in and try and get them to kind of rehash if I had to Xbox Live if I if, if I had to make a bet here um I would say that I think Microsoft pretty much allows them to continue to do what they do mm -hmm. and then Microsoft does things like hey buy three months of Game Pass get three months of Discord Nitro um that maybe they finally implement a console a console side Discord app 
that you yeah. can use instead of Xbox parties because I know we would love that. Cause I you, think that would probably be the most demanded thing. Yeah, because yeah. we play a lot of crossplay with PC users a lot. You know, and Tanner hopping in, he, it sucks using the Xbox dashboard thing, and and it also with you know those PlayStation users and stuff like that. It would be nice to be able to hop in the Discord, even like. Maybe we're just in the Discord playing, me and you are playing Apex, and Spencer hops in, and mm-hmm. he doesn't have to be on the Xbox or the Xbox Live chat or any of that stuff. Yeah. And it would be fully integrated, and I think it would be better for it that way, even if you didn't have like all the Discord overlays and stuff like that, which I'm sure you could still have, but I think it would be really nice to have a, a console-side Discord-based like app that you yeah. could use. I would really, I really love that. And so I think they do that, but by, you know... Older Microsoft back in the day, 15 years ago, maybe they they say, fuck it, you're going to do what we want you to do. But, I mean, new age Microsoft has really changed the game for themselves and for the gaming industry as a whole. And I think most likely they would say, you do you. We're just going to do these couple of things and partnerships. And also, we're going to start making money from you. Yeah, I think, think well, Microsoft is, you know, they they kind of listen to what their consumers want most of the time. Yeah. You know, when they had that price hike um, a couple months ago. And they were like, like, never mind. We, We heard your calls. Um, I could see if they end up acquiring Discord, I could see a lot of uh, people asking for like, hey, get them to do something on the console. Mm-hmm. You know, try and yeah. try and get them involved there. They I, have the technology. You have the resources. Yeah. Um, figure out how to do it. So I could see them definitely. Yeah. Um, or if the people push for that, I could see them trying to do I, something like that. I also could see this this type of stuff because we're seeing this more and more. We got an, uh, uh, the next news story. We talk about a bunch of games coming to Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, if you include Discord Nitro in with Game Pass as well, if that's a possibility that they're thinking about. It is highly, highly likely. I mean, likely. does Nitro sell Game Pass? No, maybe. Maybe. Because I, I feel know. like it doesn't at all. It doesn't. It incentivizes, I think. It does. It, someone like, who's on the fence might be like, oh, okay, fuck it. Because, you know, they got the dollar deals and they do those deals all the time. Yeah. Well, an, I, think, I think it makes deal. more sense for something like Disney Plus, right? Where you feel like there isn't a free version of that. Yeah. And so people can't just like kind of like, oh, I'll suffer through the ads just to deal with the free version yeah. of it. Discord, you know, we all use yeah. the free version. Uh, maybe, maybe you wouldn't do it for that reason, but I would definitely see them just doing that because yeah. they now have the ability to do so. I don't know. Maybe there's some other cool things they can integrate. Yeah. Into, you know, if you have Game Pass, Discord has this extra feature for mm-hmm. you, you know, type of thing. And yeah, also, I was more uh, talking along the lines of uh, Game Pass definitely going to increase in price um, within oh, two or three uh, years. Uh, yeah, sure. You've eventually. seen it with Netflix. You've seen it with just with everything in Especially general. since you're bundling other services and into it. Yeah, yeah, you keep doing the dollar thing. You keep you got this next story coming up with all this shit coming out. Like there's, they're, they're giving cash out for this yeah. type of shit. So I imagine uh, game pass does increase in price, but let's talk about these games coming to game pass. Microsoft lists 22 ID at Xbox games coming to Xbox game pass art of rally, Narita boy, Sable and more. This is by Wesley and pool at Eurogamer. So I have the 22 games from ID at Xbox that are being added to game pass. We are not going to be talking about the ID at Xbox event as a whole. Well, I guess I kind of will, but we're not going to be breaking down that event as we usually would go through mm-hmm. every announcement. It was three and a half hours long. I don't have that much time on the podcast. If you were interested in the idea at Xbox event, you can go watch a rundown. I don't think it would be very entertaining because there was a lot of like talking to live chat and stuff like that. So it'd be a little weird. Gotcha. Um, but there is a lot of stuff in there that was good. But all the notable things that I wanted to talk about are here on this list. And so I will talk about them as they come. So here is the 22 games coming to Game Pass day and date on console launch from the idea at Xbox thing. So first off, Microsoft held an ID at Xbox showcase last night, and as part of its as part of it, listed 22 games coming to Xbox Game Pass. Some of the games in the list below are already out on PC, Art of Rally, for example, and some we already knew were set to launch into Xbox Game Pass at launch, Narita Boy, for example. But there are 15 additions here, including just announced Nobody Saves the World, so it's well worth shining a light on which is coming down the pipe. So first and foremost, Art of Ra- Art of Rally, Art of the Rally by uh, Fun Selector Labs Incorporated. Those coming to cloud and console. Um, what happened there? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, I've seen it out of the corner of my eye. Um, Astraya Ascending from Plugin Digital, Artisan Studios, Cloud and Console. Backbone, uh, Raw Fury. Uh, wait, what? Hold up. Uh, is that? Okay, okay. I think so, those are the studio. I think it's Publisher and Studio. So Raw Fury and, oh yeah, you might be right. And Eggnut, Cloud and Console. Boyfriend Dungeon from Kit Fox is coming to console on PC day and date. I know people were excited for that. We got to play that at PAX. Mm-hmm. Craftopia from Pocket Pair is coming to console on PC. I know that's already out on PC right now. It's one that was topping the Steam charts for a while, so I'm actually really looking forward to this one. Dead Static Drive from Team Fan Club, console and PC. Edge of Eternity, Dear Villagers and Midgar Studio coming to cloud and console. Hello Neighbor 2 from Tiny Build Games, Dynamic Pixels and Gearbox, cool. cloud and console. They showed off Hello Neighbor 2, and we now know it's coming day and date to console. And they announced, um, with the, well, I don't know if they announced with this or if it was already out, but at least at the ID at Xbox thing, they shed an extra light on it or revealed it, that instead of like in Hello Neighbor 1, where the neighbor's AI would learn and evolve based on what you, eh, my ringer is on, the, the neighbor would evolve and do stuff based on like your 
habits and he would learn yeah. your paths and it would become harder. It's community driven now and his AI is it's like machine learning based on everyone who's playing the game. So you think the game's gonna be easier at launch than it is yes. weeks down? I was sitting there watching it and I was like, How are you supposed to compete with this machine learning? If you buy the game two weeks from now, I feel like you're just gonna get pwned. Yeah. Mm, it's a little odd, but hey, super exciting. Library of Runia, Project Moon, Cloud and Console. Little Witch in the Woods, that's a big get there. S uh, SKT, Sunny Side Up, Cloud and Console. Moon Glow Bay from Coat Sync Software and Bunny Hug. This is Cloud and Console. Moon Glow Bay um, actually was one of the ones that I thought was very notable. Have you seen any of the games that was added at Xbox? No. I do advise you uh, look at least a little bit up, up about Moon Glow Bay. A, a voxel-based graphics, mm -hmm. kind of Animal Crossing-style game where you play in a uh, coastal fishing town. Okay. And I guess your great uncle died and he left you this journal. And you Classic. or you build up the town, you make friends, and it's kind of like Stardew. You can like marry people and give them gifts and stuff. Yeah. And you build up your boat and you fish. And as you fish more, you find more exotic fish and you start to find mythic fish. And like there's a storyline and it just seemed really cool. I'm intrigued. And, and they did an interview with the people who developed it um, and their passion for it just really sold me on the game. So me and Chance are going to be playing that one for sure. I do advise looking up some stuff about Moonglow Bay. Uh, Narita Boy by Team 17, Studio Koba, Cloud and Console. Nobody Saves the World from Drinkbox, Cloud and Console. So this was the announcement of Nobody Saves the World, the new Drinkbox game. If, if you're not familiar with Drinkbox, um, they made, uh, what's it called? Sh it started with an S. Sh uh, sh uh, Shutter? Sh sh I can't remember the one with the S, but they made Guacamelee. They made okay. Guacamelee. So, um, you know, those games are good. Nobody Saves the World coming day and date uh, with Game Pass is really nice because this game looked so fucking good. Mm -hmm. I'm what not going to lie to you. Have you seen the trailer for it? Nope. You gotta watch the trailer for it. It's it's super exciting. Me and Chance were immediately sold on it. It seems really fucking cool. Um, we're definitely gonna be playing it. I mean, it's on Game Pass, so what's stopping us from playing it? So that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, Omno from Studio Inky Fox, Cloud and Console. Recompile from Deer Villagers and Fi Games, coming to Cloud, Console, and PC. Sable. Uh, from Raw Fury and Shedworks coming to console and PC. She Dreams Elsewhere, a game I've been looking forward to um, from Studio Severe, console and PC. Stalker 2 from GSC Game World, that's coming to cloud and console. The Ascent from Curve Digital and Neon Giant coming to cloud, uh, console and PC. Undungeon from Tiny Build and Laughing Machines coming to cloud, console and PC. Way to the Woods from One Pixel Doc, Dog, cloud and console. And mm -hmm. The Wild at Heart, which looked kind of like... Um, don't starve uh, is coming uh, from hum from hum humble bundle and moonlight kids to console. So 22 day and date games from the ID at Xbox. They showed way more fucking games than this. Yeah, they showed over a hundred. So um, if you're interested in that list, you should go find it. I guess I don't know, but um, I was this the event where they had Hades in the promotional? No, no Hades. Well, no, no, no. It wasn't their promotional picture for it, and it had Hades in it, and Maybe. that's why Chance was like, Maybe. talking about it. I I'm pretty sure this was the event where. They, it was like announce the event and then in the, one of the panels in the background where it was mm -hmm. like showing a bunch of indie games it showed Hades yeah and we were like oh is Hades coming to Xbox that, that was that whole conversation yeah so Hades didn't get brought up at all no no Hades um, no Band Tunic Boozled. where the fuck is Tunic it doesn't we, exist where is Tunic it's a figment I don't know how many I don't know how many times I gotta have this conversation with people on the internet where the fuck is Tunic we've been waiting I played Tunic at two packs in a row we missed the packs and I probably would have played it at that one too where's Tunic I've been waiting for Tunic for so fucking long you're probably long. gonna play that the next oh one. Oh my god I, I, dude mm, it, actually take your time okay I know the game's gonna be good but fuck man Tunic was announced in 2014 yep. what, what am I supposed to do I want to play it so bad. I want to play a little Fox Zelda game. So Tunic wasn't there, and that sucked, but that's okay. And um, no, there was. I thought there was a notable, other notable thing that was missing. I will say this is probably the weirdest video gaming event I've ever watched. It really? Was, yeah. It, the the vibe was extremely weird. It wasn't traditional. It was extremely choppy. It was very confusing. Do you remember? Um, quite boring. As you remember points. Greg Miller's EA Access? Thing. Was it EA Access? EA Play? No. EA uh, Play. No. Uh, the dice? No. I know what you're talking about, but yeah. Yeah. Was it was it like that kind of weird or mm -hmm. no? No, it was just completely non-traditional and just chaotic. I don't know. It was weird. Um, okay. But yeah, there's the idea at Xbox stuff. Go look up the rest of those games if you have any interest. I can't go through them all. It a lot of games. take me an eternity. But let's still, let's stay on this Microsoft train. Microsoft rebrands Xbox Live to Xbox Network. Xbox Network is the future. This is by Tom Warren at The Verge. Microsoft is rebranding Xbox Live to Xbox Network. Instances of the new branding started appearing in the Xbox dashboard recently for beta testers with clips being uploaded to Xbox Network instead of Xbox Live. Microsoft has now confirmed the name change. Xbox Network refers to the underlying Xbox Online service, which was updated in the Microsoft Services Agreement, says a Microsoft spokesperson uh, in a statement to The Verge, quote, the update from Xbox Live to Xbox Network is intended to distinguish the underlying service from Xbox Live Gold memberships. Microsoft has 
used Xbox Live to refer to its underlying Xbox service since its original launch 18 years ago. Larry Herb, better known as Major Nelson, has been uh, known as Xbox Live's Major Nelson for years, but Herb now refers to himself as Xbox's Major Nelson. Microsoft is also now planning to drop the subscription requirement for free-to-play games on its Xbox network in the coming months. Games like Fortnite will no longer require Xbox Live Gold as a result, but Microsoft hasn't yet confirmed exactly when the paywall will be removed. So, all in all, I actually kind of think this is a good move. Because mm-hmm. there was still, not as much nowadays, but there's still the weird confusion of like, especially for, not for us, but for like generic moms, I guess, yeah. of Xbox Live Silver, Xbox Live Gold, and the two different instances, and mm-hmm. what gets you what, and Xbox Game oh, Pass I mean, now. I couldn't tell you the difference. Yeah, so it's uh, like... It's confusing to me, it's, too. It's like a whole thing. and But now, rebranding it all to Xbox Network is, is I think, is a really good... You can be like, uh, Xbox uh, Network... This is your gold membership and yada, 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 and get different things. I think it's better. Um, and also, again, like you were talking about earlier, Microsoft being able to work with the community. Um, one of the things that we've seen when they did the price hike on Xbox Live Gold was people complaining that Xbox was still the only platform that required you to get a membership to play free-to-play games like Fortnite. Yep. And to see them um, continue on that train and to, to, to run it back some more is really nice. That is good. It, I mean, it's, it's only beneficial to the player at that point. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you're going to have too many more people. Thank you. Um, like, I feel like they're not going to lose a lot of money from that. Yeah. From people no. not wanting to get Xbox Live. Because, I mean, everybody... you still going to need it to, like, talk to your friend while you play Fortnite, right? Uh, no, no, no. Well, you I can, guess you have game chat. Yeah, but you, like, can still, you can still use all of that stuff. I mean, to a certain point. Yeah. You, you still want to have that. So, you're, you're I, I can't sell, imagine they lose too much. Yeah, and you're trying to sell Game Pass at this point. You're trying to sell different things. I don't think Fortnite is really the your selling point for Xbox Live Gold no, anymore. So I don't think so it's, either. It's, that's really good. Um, let's start talking negative, though. Let's talk a little negative. The 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 echoes, the 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 classic rebuttal to the digital age. Um, PS3, PS Vita stores will close for good Dude, this all five summer. PS3 games are gone. Won't be accessible from devices or anywhere. This is by ONS Good at Polygon. A report published Monday said the PlayStation Store for Sony's PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, and the PlayStation Portable will close for good in July and August, making digital copies of games of those platforms unavailable for purchase from then on. The Gamer, citing unnamed sources familiar with the matter, said the PS3 and PSP stores will close on July 2nd, and the PS Vita storefront will shut down August 27th. Polygon reached out to Sony representatives for additional information. No reply was made at publication time. Vita and PS3-only games are, for now, accessible only through the PlayStation Store app on both units. Those platforms are not searchable from the PlayStation Store's website and haven't been available there since a not-well-liked redesign in October. Sony phased out the PS3 over several regions between 2015 and 2016 before formally discontinuing the console in May of 2017. The PlayStation Vita, which launched in the winter of 2011 and 2012, was shut down on March 2019. The closure of the PlayStation Store presents more of an issue for the PS Vita users, considering how many of that platform's notable games were any developed and sold online only. Direct backward compatibility with PlayStation 3 from PlayStation 4 and 5 is not available in the way many Xbox 360 and earlier games are supported on Xbox One and Xbox Series X, but PS4 ports of some PS3 games are available as separate products, and still other PS3 and PS2 games are streamable to modern consoles from the PlayStation Now subscription service. So this is just the growing pains of the digital age. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's going to hurt to see so many of these games lost. I'm sure, um, you know, a lot of foundations are going to have this stuff archived away so it's not gone forever. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, of course, the companies that make the game will have it. But, you know, I'm sure the Video Game Foundation was like, oh, well, time to to get in there and do some stuff. Yeah, make sure Um, we have copies of all these games. I think this is a problem we start to not see very much in the future um, with console mm-hmm. manufacturers and these console companies now giving a more big a bigger focus on backwards compatibility yeah xbox really leading the charge with that playstation joining in on the fun of ps5 to ps4 mm-hmm. um you see it's fully backwards compatible i think this is not a problem we see any any more going forward no, and this the generation the after this and the generation after this i think will stay backwards compatible with all the, and maybe they'll say we're stopping support for the PlayStation 4 store, but you can still buy all the PlayStation 4 games on your PS6. Right? Yeah. Um, I think this won't be a problem in the future, but it is the growing pains, and it does cost money to keep these stores open um, and hold servers and whatnot. So you hate to see it, and if you got a PS Vita, get out there and buy some SD cards. And, and <laughs> well, Download I guess, everything I guess you, you can't even buy SD cards because you got to use a proprietary so, memory card. But So if you already have a game bought and you don't have it downloaded, mm-hmm. it's gone. I'm not that, sure. Cause I'm that's not, the, I think that was the main question was like, if I've already bought these games mm-hmm. and I just don't have them downloaded right now, do I need to go and download them I and don't know. put them on SD cards like I, that? They, you know? they, maybe, they, maybe they've already answered that, but as I do not. I do not. I, I didn't see an answer when it was uh, big news on Twitter the other day. So yeah. that's, that's we'll have to wait and see. I would play is. it safe and assume you won't be able to. So. Yeah. 
go buy you a bunch of PS Vita memory cards and download your shit because that game was 90% digital or that console was 90% digital anyway. Let's talk about more happy things though. Yeah. A Pikmin alternate reality game is in the ne- is the next project for Pokemon Go developer Niantic by Hope Bellingham at Games Radar. I'm saying a Pikmin AR game is being developed by Pokemon Go developer Niantic. Announced via a brief blog post blog post from the developer explaining the project. Kawhi, yeah. VP of product management at Niantic, explained that, quote, Niantic and Nintendo are developing an app based on the Pikmin franchise. The app will include gameplay activities to encourage walking and make walking more delightful. The post <laughs> that just makes me so happy. Yeah. The post also details that the app is set to launch later this year and will be the first title created by Niantic's Tokyo Studio after it was established in April of 2018. Similar to Pokemon Go, the aim of the app is to intersect with the Pikmin characters we all know and love in, re- in the real world. Uh, with the use of augmented reality technology, Niantic also announced that those interested in the app can pre-register for it via their website. So that's cool. They announced it, and it's going to come out this year. That's exciting. Yeah. I don't is. know what you're going to do. I don't know. They use the phrase we all know and love. But like, yeah. You played, who's we? You played Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Me, and I still don't know if I know. You know all that. You don't have any sort of idea what they could do? Not a clue. I mean, I understand how Pikmin work in the game. You know, you mm-hmm. you. you Pick them up. Yeah, throw them. Yeah, get some more if you have the bottle caps. <laughs> that's really it. I don't know. I don't know how you make a game. I'm sure you can. You know. Yeah. I don't know how you make a game that's as powerful or as strong as Pokemon Go is. You know. You don't. I don't think you, you will. Literally, do not. But I'm like, again. I, like, how long do they think this is gonna last? Like, a couple years, maybe. Because that's the aim, right? It's got to be a live service, like 100%. constantly updating. You know, maybe the same way. Maybe it's fun and it's successful. Uh, I hope so. Maybe, dude, what if it kind of revitalizes the Pikmin franchise? That'd be cool. That would be cool. If, Pikmin if is you, kind of in a lull right now. Yeah, because, you know, free games get people into <clears throat> an IP, right? You know, getting to play, getting to be introduced <clears throat> to the Pikmin franchise for free might bring a lot of people in, you know, to buy three to, deluxe. Yeah, compared to that could be spending a, 60 bucks. It, it could be a money chess move. Yeah, it could be that. I think, I think it could be too. We'll, we'll have to see. Until then, though. There's another thing that we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima movie yes, your is in the works. video game film. <laughs> PlayStation insert. blog. This is from the PlayStation blog. A Ghost of Tsushima movie is in the works. The idea of translating our game into a new medium is exciting, and we're intrigued by the possibilities. We've all been brought to tears in a movie theater surrounded by strangers. Thanks a lot, E.T. I don't know why they didn't. You know, they quoted E.T., of all the, of all the movies, of all the movies, of in, all the movies. Award, yeah, you know, in game, whatever. We've all gone to a movie on opening night when the crowd is excited that is so excited that they cheer as the lights go down. Hey. I miss that feeling so bad. Mm. It's a group experience that isn't replicated anywhere else. To think that we could go sit in a theater someday watching Jin Sakai up on the big screen is amazing. We'd all relive his tense transformation into the ghost from a whole new vantage point. We are happy to partner with Sony Pictures to make this happen, and Jin is in very good hands with the film's director. Chad Chad S. created something special with John Wick. His vision for what it could be, backed up by years of experience, combined to create some of the... Jeez. Combined to... I'm flubbing a lot today. Combined to create some of the finest action scenes ever created. If anyone could bring to life the razor-sharp tension of Jin's katana combat, it's Chad S. Also, I'm hype, happy to say we've sold more than 6.5 million copies of Ghost of Tsushima now, and that uh, roughly and that roughly half of those people have made it all the way through the game. Huh. Can you believe that? That's around 3.25 million times the digital Mongols have been kicked out of digital Tsushima. So that's exciting. That is cool. It's I nice, think it's nice to see that news coming from an actual like Sony blog instead yeah, of like... Of just comicbook.com yeah. yeah also I will say I do think a Ghost of Tsushima lends itself well to a movie I think it does the entire vibe of the game is Cinematic. samurai movie that's yeah. that's the whole stick the game there's a lot of good gameplay man maybe I should replay that game there's a lot of good gameplay in there mm-hmm. and it's not one of those games where it's like oh it's all cutscenes so it's just a movie right it's not yeah. one of those games but the game itself is very movie like yeah um, and so i very i very much think that it could lend no watch, well watching you play movie. it it uh, just had a very cinematic vibe mm-hmm. and like the, the the way it was designed was mm-hmm. meant to feel like cinema even with though the photo mode game. and the different uh, camera filters and stuff mm-hmm. like it, it was really cool so i think it could lend itself quite well to to a movie we'll have to see and the john wick guy I mean, he makes good yeah, movies. yeah i mean i'm sure it's gonna lend itself better than a lot of the other titles we've seen and, be- better than monster hunter better than yeah oh, and, I, and i think i'd be excited to see the john wick style combat but with blades I think I'm in. Oh, that. I'm sure it'll like be good. In a, in a same I have setting. I have no doubt in the uh, director. I as long as it'll be okay th- at least. I think since Sony is attached to it, mm-hmm. it'll I have a little more hope yeah. than it just being like, here's our IP, here's a random director and company, mm-hmm. go have fun, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We're Probably. finally we're finally gonna get a video game movie. Yeah. Uh, Mortal Kombat comes out next month. Oh yeah, we'll actually get. Well, we got Monster Hunter. 
We're, we're, finally, getting <laughs> we're finally getting a video, video game, game movie. movie. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. One more news story for you. PUBG Mobile passes a billion downloads. Just take that in. That's a lot. <laughs> Milestone reaches uh, Milestone reaches as Tencent's online games revenue rises 29% year on year to $6 billion. Dollars. That's such an insane fucking increase. This is from James Bat. God, the dryer. The dryer. The dryer exploded. God. That scared the shit out of me, man. Okay. The mobile version of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has surpassed 1 billion downloads outside of China. The fig- It's going to beep again if someone doesn't open it. Uh, the figure was revealed during publisher Tencent's recent earnings call, Reuters reports. The Battle Royale's popularity on mobile has driven it to become one of the most downloaded games in the world, according to estimates from Sensor Tower. Only Subway Surfers and Candy Crush Saga have outperformed it. Hey, I've downloaded Subway Surfers. I can say I've added to that. Mm-hmm, Notably, mm-hmm. both titles are casual titles, so PUBG Mobile raises the bar for what core focused title can accomplish on mobile. For a Battle Royale port uh, onto mobile to get this many downloads is it's crazy. Yeah, and when you think about how many people there are in the world and what percentage of that people decided to download PUBG Mobile, and then, you just, then you just remove all the people in China too. Yeah. That's that's a good percentage. Yeah, that's like, a good chunk. Uh, there was some other stuff in this article that was really nice where they were talking about how the the total revenue for this is also like out of this world, but that total revenue d- is not counted in China because China doesn't monetize PUBG Mobile. Really? Yep. There's like something weird. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but it, it was all convoluted and weird, and I didn't feel it was very necessary. That's to the story, crazy. So I didn't include One it, but billion downloads. Yeah, a billion people played your game. Literally a billion, a whole billion. That's crazy. Okay, so uh, wow. let's talk about. This next section of the podcast. This section of the podcast is yes. the section of the podcast mm-hmm. after. This is called this week in gaming. The section of the podcast where we talk about. Um, I'm not. Gonna. You guessed it. Yep. Anybody? Any takers? Jordan, do you know what this you, one is? Do you know what this? Do you know what this? Sec- mm-hmm. Do you know what? If I had to guess. If you had to guess, I'd probably say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This year in gaming. This year in gaming. No, this not year, this year. That'd this be a was long really, It was really segment. close though. This That's week right. in gaming. Oh, okay. But okay, we should I consider see, that yeah. this week and get. Yeah. We should consider that. This year in gaming, <laughs> I said next year. That's called. Gaming. That's just the game. Oh, you said next year in gaming. Yes. Oh shit. Oh, we should consider that. <laughs> that's just our <laughs> predictions episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. March twenty eighth. Let's get it started off. This this week in gaming, I think it's kind of light, but Pokemon Stadium two came Most out in two thousand and one. Kingdom Hearts two, two baby came out in two thousand. You're just gonna casually run over Pokemon Stadium two like. No, I'm just saying it can't carry a whole week on his back though. Oh yeah, but like I'm just saying, it's a good game. It is a good game. Kingdom Hearts two dropped in two thousand six. Oh, phenomenal. On Yoshi's Crafted amazing. World dropped two years ago, on March twenty eighth. You played that? Great game. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> For the listeners, he's shaking his head. March 29th, RuneScape drops in two thousand and one. Iconic, iconic. Shout out Chance. Yeah, March thirtieth, Resident Evil, the first OG. one drops in nineteen ninety six. Tank control. March thirty first, Doom sixty four drops in ninety seven. Starcraft, the first one drops in ninety eight. A which year will later, becomes Starcraft two, uh, which a lot of people still play. Axiom Verge dropped six years ago. That blows my mind. Is uh, that the 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 Metroid like? Yep. Wow. And wow. six years ago, yeah, that one blew my mind. That game came out before Hyperlift. Drifter. Yeah, and oh. Hyperlight Drifter dropped in twenty sixteen. Five years ago. That's crazy. Time. Flies sometimes. Goat Simulator dropped seven years ago on April Fool's Day. What Bro, a game. What a game. April. Hey, is Noah in here? Yeah, there's Noah. Hi, Noah, Noah. Noah will remember this. Uh, my mom actually banned him from playing Goat Simulator because it had satanic imagery. Because there's like an Easter egg in the game mm-hmm. where you have to drag humans over to this pentagram and then you can turn into like a devil goat. Mm-hmm. And my mom was not having it, dude. Damn. She was not having it. Rip. Uh, April 2nd, Skyrim VR dropped in 2018. Mm-hmm. And April 3rd, shout out Noah and shout out you eight years ago, Battle Block Theory, Theater. I love that game. That game is phenomenal. Battle Block Theater is fucking funny. It, yeah, it's funny. It's really fun too. Good gameplay. You know, it's just a good game. Fun game. I love that game. I um, love that game. No, this is a banger week. What do you mean? No, it's okay. It's just okay. It, what? It's just an okay week, man. I want you to go find me a banger week. and then Like last week was pretty good too. Yeah. Compared to... No, nah, these titles are definitely... I appreciate well, these titles more. The, hold up. I appreciate these titles more than last week. I'm pulling out the old... I'm pulling out the old... The old uh, pods here. Infamous Second Son, Mass Effect, the original God of War, Pokemon Platinum, bro. Sekiro. <laughs> Far Cry, A Way Out, Nino Kuni 2, <laughs> fucking Wind Waker, the PSP, <laughs> Bloodborne, <laughs> Bioshock Infinite, and fucking Warframe. Come on, bro. But Battle Block. <laughs> he could have chose any week, and he chose the week to dunk on you. Bro. That was just last week. <laughs> that was yeah. That was, <laughs> that, was that, that was just the one on top. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, now it's the game time. 
Uh, did I? Did I? Did you? Do I think me? I had to guess it last time. Did you? Yes. Because it yes. was. Oh, it was Yoshi. It was Yoshi. It was Yoshi. Mm-hmm. Okay, think of a character for me, Poppy. Dude, should I? Do me good, Poppy. Should I think of a character for you? Yeah. Mm. I got one. You got one. What should we do next week? What should we do? Is your mic on? Are you unmuted? Yeah. yeah. yeah turn, next turn. week, I should choose a character, and you guys have to see if you can get it first. Oh, yeah. We could do that. that yeah. Actually, we, we could do that literally right now. Right well, now. well, I already picked the character. Oh, okay. Well, actually, yeah. I might pick the character. Next right. week. We'll do it next week. I used all my brain I forgot power. we could include Jordan now in the game. We should oh, do that more often. Okay. Is this, an exclu- is this a uh, character, an exclusive character? No. No. Well... I mean, exclusive as in like, well, okay, characters are not like you know because like Master yeah, Chiefs we, in Fortnite now. I mean, like, is this character owned by one of the big three, not a third party character? Is what I mean. Is this character considered a first party character? Yes, <laughs> yes. Is this character considered a first party character? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. We're off to a great fucking start. Now. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Why you gotta ask these hard questions? Is this character a first party, bro? Is this character playable? Dog. No. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, dude, come on. Okay, nope, not playable. We're going to go now. We're going to go now? Yeah, we're going to go now. It's so easy to mess them up. All right, now it's time for reader mail. You, I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um. Uh. Fuck you, Mike. Um. Whoa. Whoa. <clears throat> whoa. whoa. No need for all the hostility. That was, that was rude. Uh, no, nah, I love you. Sometimes. Yeah, his character is not playable. His character is we're gonna go with yes, a first party character, and we're gonna go with no. It's not playable. Um, is it Nintendo? No. Sony? No. Xbox? Sure. Bro, what? <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, is this character part of the Halo franchise? No. Okay. Gears? No. What else does What else does Xbox have? Um, Forza. Indie game. This character in the indie game. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. This character is in an indie game, but not playable. Um. Uh. Would you say the game that they're in is well received? Very. Have we talked about this game recently? Um, the game that they're in. Um. As, sh- as in today. I'll, I don't think we have. As today. in today. I don't no. think so. That's 10. That's 10 questions. Noah doesn't have a shirt on. That's okay. Um, why are you so focused? Me? <laughs> yeah, you're laser focused, man. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm just focused. I'm off in thought. Um, not playable Microsoft character, but an indie game? What? How can you be a first party character and an indie game? That actually doesn't make any, actually, that doesn't make any sense. Hold up. That's, that's not even possible. <laughs> Have I played the game that they're in? Yes. What is going we'll on? We'll sort out the details later. <laughs> dude. Dude. <laughs> I feel like it's going to get real spicy soon. Okay. Is this game... Have a physical copy. Can The game that they're in, is it physical or digital only? It's not digital only. It's okay. So it's physical? So it's physical? Yeah. Well, it's it, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's so it's di- it's so it's digital. Well, no, it's not. Well, I you could it's both. Oh, that yeah. Okay, yeah. I take both. Um, so okay, I take both. So it's physical. It's an indie game. Somehow, first party to Xbox, which doesn't make a ton of fucking sense. <laughs> but an indie game, not playable. We're gonna go with no, not playable. Uh, not a main character. You didn't ask that question, but yeah. Yes, I did. Well, you I said didn't. playable. I said playable. I said playable. That's what I asked. That's what I meant. Mm-hmm. Um, is this character a villain? You could say that. <sighs> Indie game? Okay. Like, like, is a, has a, char- is, has a character from the game that this character is in been crossed over into any other game? Yes. That's a very good question. Um, is the game that they're in is the art style cartoony? Uh, 
No. Okay, let me reword that. Do is, you mean like Cuphead cartoony? No. Is the game that they're in, is, there, is the graphics trying to be realistic? Or is it just... No. No. Okay, that's what I really mean. So like something like Sonic, that would be like... N- that would be no. That would be no. Yeah, or something like Banjo-Kazooie would be no. Something like... But like something like Perfect Dark, like it looks like garbage, but it's trying to be realistic. No. So it's not trying to be realistic. Oh, no, no, no. Am I anywhere close? I feel like you're super close. I thought you had it with the crossover question. The crossover question? Is the, is the crossover in question Smash Bros? Is that, is that the one? What do you mean in is question? Because we talked about a crossover. You said there was a crossover with the character from this game, not necessarily the character, but I'm from this sh- game. I'm sure multiple, but yes. Okay. So that it would have to be is the it would have is is this character from a Banjo Kazooie game? No. What? 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 How? What are we on? What question are we on? We are gonna say like eleven, seventeen? No. Fuck no. Uh, <laughs> do, what the thirteen? Actually. What the thirteen f- or fourteen? Something like that. The fuck is going on? That's fourteen. An Xbox character that's indie, but Xbox crossover with Smash Bros. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me think of indie Xbox titles. Viva Pinata. Fucking Castle now, Crashers. Now let's. You said. <laughs> Fucking I see where I've messed up here. Oh no, bro! <laughs> you, I see where I've messed you, up. No, dude. Oh, is the c- comments get ready? Huh, can we? St- can, I, can I pull you away from the mic for a second? <laughs> you know, I need you to re. Tell me where you led me astray. So you're gonna get flamed. Maybe I'm embarrassed already. <laughs> oh. So. You can get your questions read as well on the show by sending them. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to tell me where you led me astray. Okay. So I forgot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fucking. <laughs> what the fuck? Because it's not on PlayStation, right? Yes, it's on PlayStation. It's on PlayStation? You didn't know Minecraft was on PlayStation, Mike? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> What? Hold up! I don't need live audience reaction too. <laughs> he said. He said. I forgot. Minecraft is on the Switch. <laughs> that thing's on everything. It's on your cell phone. Well, um, yeah, I know, but in my head, it was like only on Xbox. No, but wasn't PC, it for a while? PC and then over to Xbox and PlayStation at the same, at the same time? time. Yes. I don't believe that. And Pocket Edition. I don't believe that. And then at they all. were bought by Microsoft, and then it became Bedrock. What? So it's owned by Microsoft? Yeah, so yeah, it's a first party, but like... Okay, so I'm still right, but wrong. Yeah, like what you were saying made no fucking sense, but yeah, you were you So were right. I didn't mess up during the questioning. No, you just messed up and thinking that you messed up. Okay. I forgot my crap is on the Switch. <laughs> wow, okay, so yeah, I guess technically that is an indie game first party. Because I couldn't... In my head, I was like, it's a Microsoft game. So, okay, so it's, it's not playable. Um... Is this character actually in the game? Yes, that's 15. Okay, so it's not Harold. We'll Brown. say that's 15. I don't know how many questions that is. Harold um, not actually in the game. No. Duly noted. <laughs> Do you need to change your answer? Nope. Okay. Okay, good. That's just new information. I would have thought they would add so it. So there's only now. like... How has so, he not been added yet? I don't know. Um, Is this character a dragon? No, 16. This character got three heads? No, 17. What? Oh, I guess there's other fucking... Yeah, I'm stupid. Is this character... Can this character... Uh, ride on other characters? No. Basically, is this character a skeleton or a zombie is what I'm saying? No. Okay, cool. So it's not a skeleton or a zombie? Zombies can ride on... On spiders too, yeah. No way. Yeah. No. Bit, yeah, you've never seen a baby uh, zombie ride on a spider? It happens all the time to me. No, so, I've never. Swear. Hmm. Um, do you need to change your answer? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, does this character have eight legs? Does it have eight legs? 
I guess technically six legs. <laughs> and wouldn't the one you're thinking of be four? Do spiders have four legs in Minecraft? Oh, spiders have six. Yeah. Is right? this character spider? Is this character is no, this character spider, spider? Okay, cool. This is your last question. The one I've asked nineteen? Yeah. Okay. Uh okay, so I got one question left to try to narrow this down. Yep. You got rid of a lot of mobs there. How many mobs are left? I think I think two. Zombie, skeleton, spider are all knocked off the list. Um You have left. I which, mean, a lot. Which, there's some obscure one. Yeah. Is this is this character typically appear in a swamp? You really gonna use it on that? No. Yeah. No. Okay. So it's not a slime or a witch. So you're that you gotta guess it now. So okay, is it a zombie pigman? No. Okay. What is it? <laughs> How are you gonna just skip over creeper? Oh, oh no! Damn, son. I forgot about the creeper. Damn, son. Man, we're both stupid. Yeah. We're really All right, moving dumb. on to reader mail. You can get your questions read on the show just, by writing it to synced at gmail.com, just like Spencer Trevette did. So I got a very heartfelt email from Spencer Trevago Tre- Trevette here that I would like to read. It made me cry earlier. So, Spencer Trevette, this is to you, Miguel. He wanted me to read it on the show. Dear Miguel, Last week, you wrote into the show with a tremendous amount of courage to divulge your life to a bunch of strangers. I didn't know how to reach out to you, so I hope this gets read this week. But just know that Miriam, that's his wife, and I are keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. Life is tough sometimes, and sometimes we don't fully understand why. But those with the inner strength to get through, out, get through it will always prevail. Don't be afraid to lean onto others for support. It doesn't make you weak to do so. It makes you smart. A person never is never strongest alone. I'm not a licensed therapist or spiritually lightened person, but I have had a, had my fair share of life experiences. And if you want to talk some to someone or just need a shoulder to lean on, I'm here. I won't claim to know what you're going through, but I will try my best to help you understand. You can find me in the Discord server. I'm that asshole with the funny profile pic, or you can reach out to me on my personal cell phone number. I won't read it. He said not to read it, but he did want me to forward that to Miguel, which I did I'll do. We would love to have you um, as part of our synced up family and help you through all the rough patches you may have. Best, Spencer T. P.S. The book was phenomenal, and your five-star reviews are well-deserved. We also have a email here from Fielding Dahmer also talking about the same subject. I figured I would read it um, as well before we get on to the goofiness. Um, Fielding says, you can read this on the show if you feel like it fits. I really appreciated Miguel's email. It takes a lot of strength to share personal stories, but I feel like it really helps those going through similar situations. The show has been a great help for me. Although I love shows like Min Max and Kind of Funny, they don't really feel nearly as personal as this one does. Thank you for being yourselves and including others. I feel like you won't ever be able to see all the positivity you add to the lives of others, but I want to let you know that you've had a positive impact on my personal life. Everybody who works on the show and contributes to it is awesome. So, um, yeah, so we got those two emails in response to uh, last week. If you were not in the, if you did not listen to the reader mail section last week, um, was that last week? Yeah. Um, Miguel wrote in uh, with a very, very personal and heartful, heartfelt email talking about some uh, personal things that was going on in his life and some of the struggles. I reached out to him and asked him if he thought it was okay if I read it on the show because it, it impacted me and kind of reinvigorated my uh, flame to do this podcast here. Um, and these these two emails here also keeping that flame going as well. So if you, if you did not listen to last week's episode, at least go back and listen to that part at the reader mail section where we talk about what was going on in Miguel's life and, and the positive impact that our podcast has had on him. I mean, it's, it's nice to see uh, Spencer here and even Fielding, you know, he's not as... Um, He's not as active in the Discord or anything, but Fielding even managing to send in an email just to say, hey, I appreciated Miguel's email. You guys had an impact on my life as well. This stuff uh, really means a lot to us. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it really, really, really does. Like, uh, it's, it's really cool to see this type of stuff. Um, and for, for even Spencer to feel like, hey, this feels like very personal and feels like a close kind of family type thing. I, I, I like that. I, I, I really do. It's, it's, it's appreciated. Um, and I've had, you know, I, like I told I told uh, Spencer I've, I was going through some stuff. I actually, I just told the Discord we was going through some stuff, and I, I said it here on the podcast last week and the, the two weeks prior to that um, that there's been a lot of stuff going on. And, and for all of them to reach out to me, not only through the Discord, but personally to say, hey, if you need anything, I'm here, that was cool. And then to see the same exact thing happen, but for just a fan of the pod, I'm, I don't think Miguel's in the Discord, um, but he, he only wrote in a few emails. He wanted us to shout out his book, and we did. Um, and it was, it's been cool. And for him to be like, Hey, I've been gone for a while because of this. And then everyone kind of being like, Hey, just showing love out there. It's really cool to see that. I, yeah. you know, I really appreciate it. So I appreciate, um, Spencer and Fielding, you guys deciding to reach out and, um, 
you know, extend that arm to Miguel as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be through us, but the idea that, you know, you guys are helping each other mm -hmm. without even needing us to be there, you know, as a, me as a medium, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It excites yep. me. I, I think it's, I don't know. It, it's a really special thing going mm -hmm. on here. For and people halfway across the country, halfway across the world, um, to, to feel some sort of thing with our podcast, you know, Lyle, Lyle being from, from uh, Melbourne and listening to our podcast. Uh, Lucas being from Rhode Island and listening to our podcast. Spencer's Spencer from in North, North Carolina, Carolina listening yeah, to our podcast. So uh, Miguel's in, I think, New York. It's just, it's cool. Yeah. It's it's really fucking cool. And so we, we appreciate y'all. Um, and we're looking out for you, Miguel. Spencer's looking out for you. And Fielding is also looking out for you. Again, I forwarded that email to you, Miguel, if you have not checked your email with the phone number for Spencer, if you would like to call or text him. Um, or you can just join the Discord if you want. If you have a Discord, you can you or or mm -hmm. not, you can get one and join the Discord, and we will talk to you all the time. So, let's get into the goofiness, though. Um, let's let's turn that yes, around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Saw, dudes. This is from Spencer. <laughs> Which video game character do you think has the most drip? I know this is a hard transition, but we got to do it. Mm -hmm. And who do you think can be catching all the clout, and who be chasing it? Sincerely, Spencer Travago. Who so, who the, has the who most the drip? dripped? And, and who do you think be catching all the clout, and who is chasing all the clout? So um, but the most drip, I mean, that one sniper guy from Rogue Co. Oh, Fixer. Fixer, yeah, he got drip. Fixer. He do have That's drip. his whole shtick, though. He do so, have drip. He got drip. Um, Loki, I think Cloud Strife got drip. He, yeah. Well, actually, I don't think Cloud Strife got drip, but I think he catching clout inadvertently. He definitely catching clout. I think, you know, someone who's chasing clout, um, Gary Oak. Who? Oh, Gary Oak. Wait, like the professor? No. Who? Gary. Gary? Who are you talking about? You don't know Gary from the Pokemon games? Oh. Your rival? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Damn. Yeah. Fake no. fan. Um, Jesus. You know I'm not like super into Pokemon Pals. Yeah. I, mean, I know Jordan was lost too, so. He was always all acting cool. Mm -hmm. Smell you later. Smell you later. He would. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's related. To I thought it was to me. I just heard it as one word, like Gary Oak, and I was like, "No, who's Gary Oak?" Yeah, but he be, he was chasing Cloud. Like yeah. he was like, "I'm gonna be the best," you know. Yeah, you're 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 my little rival, you know. Yeah, but who who got drip? I think I think hmm, there's got to be some good answers here. I can't think of one. No. Y'all are a little quiet, bro. Sora does not have drip. Sora His outfits are drip. goofy. Yeah. You know who do have drip? Can't say that. Aloy got drip. Aloy does have drip. I will admit. Let me think. Let me think. Let me. I, I, I got it. Hmm. A Aloy got drip for sure. I got no other answers, man. I'm cashed. You're thinking? Dead air. Does no. it have to be male? It doesn't have to no. be male. What the fuck? Dead air. Dead air. What you got? The girl? The girl, Tifa, Tifa, Tifa got drip. Yeah. What? I mean, Tifa's Shantae. Shantae. Yeah. Hey, Shantae there got you drip. go. That's what you talking about. That's what you talking about. Um, that's that's all I got. I feel like there'd be some really good answers if I sat down and thought about this. What's the dude? Turn on. Make sure you're mic. Dude from Saint Row. The dude from Saint Row. I cannot Johnny, remember his Johnny name. Johnny what? Johnny Sins? No, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's on your mind? That's the part. Who on your mind? Movie. No, what, Johnny. But he got drip. Is, it's not Johnny Ace. It's like Johnny. Gat. Johnny, Johnny Gat. Yeah, he got drip. Yeah, Johnny Gat. How you you dig me? I feel like you. You want to know how I got there? Was that like a far reach? I was like Saints Row. Gat of the hell. Johnny Gat. Yeah, Johnny no, Gat. it is Johnny Gat. Okay, wow, that's crazy. Okay, cool. I'm Feel, a guy. I love Saints Row the Third. It's a good game. So Fielding Dahmer <laughs> uh, writes in here. Drip. He says, "Good day, gentlemen." Do you enjoy a good grind? A grind that ends in the player being OP and one-shotting enemies oh, feels so kind. good. But I feel like it should be optional. I'm not a fan of being forced to grind for a tough boss fight. What are your thoughts? Peace out, fielding. I no. think... I don't enjoy a good grind. See, okay. Let's... let's. I'm going I'm to use Pokemon. Always, you know, a good go-to answer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to grind in Pokemon. But if you want to grind... You can grind for, like, shinies. Mm -hmm. You can grind and complete the Pokedex. All mm -hmm. forms of grinding. You, you know, time-consuming, repetitive. Um, but it's rewarding. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with beating the game. Yeah. I like those types of grinds. If I have to grind... What about JRPG grind? I like it most of the time. <laughs> I hate it, dude. Well, because... I hate it's, it. I hate... 
doing random encounters solely for the purpose of just leveling up my team. Yeah. And trying to get stronger. I'm okay if it's for the for a quest or if I'm just grinding naturally through the game. Mm-hmm. But if I ever have to like stop because I'm losing a boss fight because I didn't grind enough and level up earlier, yeah, that sucks. I had to do that at the end of Dragon Quest where I couldn't beat the final fight. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll go AFK, farm, you know, a couple levels and then come back and beat this pretty easily. Yeah. I didn't like that. But the kind of natural grinding in it was fine where you're just doing encounters as you go from place to place. That's fine. I enjoy that. I enjoy grinding that's not needed to beat the game. Mm-hmm. Like what I said with Pokemon. So, um, you know, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. I think a game can be good with or without. Okay. You did not have a lot of thought on that. No, you I, just said no. I don't. I get, I'm also very tired. But no, I do not. I don't really. I Johnny grinding. Sins really took the wind out of you. Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, the Johnny Sins joke. That really, <laughs> that really ended for me. And I forgot to do it, but I, I, we do need to move the what you've been playing section up. I think we should do that. Oh, we forgot to do that. And yeah. so let's talk about the games we've been playing. You said nothing new. You haven't been playing anything new. Yeah, uh, Apex League. Yeah, classic. Um, so I've been playing Seasonal more Depression. More Tetris. Actually, yeah, I've been playing more Tetris Effect because it's it's doing it for me. Um. I made it to playing golf in Last of Us Two, and um, I I can't do it. I can't do it. That, I, that's what I said. I, I I can't do it. I I tried. Uh, sorry. I I was playing it with Adriana. She was watching me play, obviously, and that was why I was replaying the game because she wanted to to rewatch it. And it took me like three minutes. To, okay, I guess in the podcast we'll see you later. If you don't, any spoilers for Last of Us Two. Peace. But, Goodbye. Um, the point when you're Ellie and you're you're walking through like after Joel gets shotgun into the knee and mm-hmm. he's like, "Y'all look like y'all heard of us or something." She's like, "Cause he have," and she shotguns him in the knee, sobbing, sobbing. Then you you know how you walk into the house and you start you start to go down the stairs. You know what I'm talking about? And mm-hmm. then you open the door. I got to the door, and it took everything to fucking open that door. Yeah. I was losing it, and I made it to the scene, and I, like, it sounds childish, but, like, for a grown man to to quite literally whimper at a fucking video game, but that's what I was doing, man. I was losing it, so I can't fucking do it. I can't. I finished it. I paused. My vibe was off the rest of the night. I went. Oh, I, I bumped the mic, hella. I went to bed and I was just like, I don't want to. I don't. I can't. So no, I'm not doing it. I can't. I cannot. I'll. I will never be able to replay that game. I don't think. I get that same by playing League. I got <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Um, and also, um, shout out to Chance Rainer. We started It Takes Two. Played the first few hours. That game. On a completely different note, super fucking fun, dude. That mm-hmm. game's great. That game's phenomenal. It's an incredibly fun co-op game. It does some really unique things in terms of game design and, and other things. I really, really enjoy really enjoy wow. it. The story's fun. The game's funny. And it's an- just another banger for yeah. Joseph. I right? yeah. Well, I don't know about another banger. Well, I guess Brothers yeah, Tale of the Sons is good. And, and uh Way Out's not it's just okay though. I'm sorry, it's just okay. But it takes two. It's fucking great, and I think it should might be in the running for game of the year if everything keeps fucking getting delayed. And uh, definitely might make like best co-op game, it's something like that. I don't know. It, it really is best really good. So you, sh- you should try it. It's forty bucks, um, and you can play it with your significant other on the side on your couch. You can play it with your homie on the, on the couch. You can buy it digitally what and send a code. Person? Your homie and your significant other, um, and you can buy it digitally and send a friend code to your friend as well yeah, they'll let you do that hmm. so they can they can't play the game on their own but they can play it with you kind of like the the, the microsoft not microsoft nintendo uh DS. mario kart ds thing well what, what was it called it was like ds family share ds no. something i can't remember but it was play something play anywhere no that's what it, it was no that's not what it was like when oh my who knows what it is we gotta end this podcast though. It's, it? it's it's late it's 11 30 i'm tired so let's do it send it send it can't think of it <laughs> thank no. you Thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Synced Up Podcast, whether on YouTube or the podcast services. We appreciate you. Again, mm-hmm. follow us on Twitter at Synced Up Pod to keep up to date with all of our stuff. If you're in person over there, sitting over there, thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Duggar, Isaiah, Kylie, Noah, yeah, Adri for a while. Um, we appreciate you. We love each and every one of you and each and every one of you on the uh, on the video or audio feed. doesn't matter. Um, 
like, subscribe, do all the stuff. We will see y'all probably on Tuesday or Wednesday with an impression vid for uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter World. But uh, yeah, if, if World. Else, well, yeah, Monster Hunter wow. Rise, my bad. And uh, if not, we will see y'all next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.